Hello students, I am Dr. Suganti. Today I am going to deal about receiving food commodities. Receiving is an administrative function that involves checking of the quality, quantity and conditions of the incoming foods followed by their proper storage. It can also be defined as an activity for ensuring that products delivered by suppliers are those that were ordered by the food service managers. The objectives of this lesson is to explain the relationship between receiving food and food safety and know the correct receiving procedures to minimize food losses and contamination. Next we will see about the location of the receiving area in any food service institution. The receiving area may serve as an entrance for employees and salespeople, a place for general storage and a passage to where trash is stored all of which suggest a need for good sanitary, safety and security procedures. Receiving area is generally located close to the storage area so that the food can be sent directly to the stores after checking. In smaller establishments, there is usually a small receiving area where a weighing scale and a work table are placed to check the quality of foods as they arrive. In larger establishments, the receiving area may be a bigger area located close to the roads to receive trucks carrying the ordered items. The size of the receiving area for a specific food facility is influenced by the nature and volume of the foods received and the amount of food received at the same time. Enough space should be available to permit all incoming products to be inspected and checked at the same time. Products like cereal and cereal products require minimum inspection as checking the package, reading the label, counting the number of bags etc. To eliminate confusion for the receiving clerk, storage should not begin until the delivery personnel have left the premises. Next, we will be seeing about the receiving area personnel. The person responsible for receiving should not be involved in food purchasing or production. Separating the duties of purchasing and receiving ensures adequate control. In addition to being familiar with food product and quality, the receiving personnel must be able to detect old stocks, excess shrinkage and any decrease in the quality and quantity of the products. The receiving clerk should be provided with the specifications and the purchase order sent to the supplier as a basis for checking the products delivered. Receiving personnel should be well trained in matching specifications with the product delivered to ensure quality in the products. Next, we will go about seeing items essential in the receiving area. The first and foremost thing in the receiving area is scales in good working order. Both platform and counter scales should be available. All scales should be checked periodically for accuracy and efficiency. Portion scales are useful for checking portion cuts of meat and all other products. In larger operations, the scale prints the weight of the product on the reverse side of the invoice or a packing slip which can be attached 
to eliminate doubt in the weight of the product. The next item essential in the receiving area is an unloading platform. This should be of a convenient height for delivery trucks to unload along with a ramp to facilitate the unloading of trucks that do not match the platform height. The next item is hand trucks. They are important to expedite the movement of products to storage with least amount of effort. A table for inspection of deliveries. The next item will be a thermometer which is needed to check if chilled or frozen products are delivered at the correct temperature according to specifications. Tools such as scan opener, crowbar, claw hammer and short blade knife for opening containers and packages. Clipboards, pencils and marking equipments. File cabinet for storing records and reports. Last but not the least, calculator to verify the computations on the invoice. Next, we will see the verification to be done by employees. A designated employee should verify and document the following. Incoming raw materials. All should be from approved suppliers. Cleanliness of the truck. There should not be any foreign materials, dirt, odors, rodents, insects, or other pest. Temperature of the truck. This is particularly important for non-perishables. Proper level to maintain products according to specifications. Conditions of door seals. Close fitting doors with no space at sides or bottom. That is, it should be airtight. General truck conditions. There should not be any cracks and insulation should be in good conditions. Scheduled hours for receiving goods. Suppliers should be allowed to make deliveries only at stipulated times. This policy ensures the following. Reduces the confusion of too many deliveries arriving at the same time. And delivery will not arrive during meal timings or after office hours of the personnel. The main aim of any food service institution is to receive only safe food. So the food service institution should only receive food which is safe, suitable, not contaminated and within the temperature control and can be traced back to the suppliers. Points to be ensured when food is received. Staff should be available to inspect when food arrives. All packaging are intact and is not damaged or ripped. Unpackaged food is in clean containers and covered completely. Materials used to cover food are suitable for food packaging. Frozen foods should not show signs of thawing and potentially hazardous foods are kept below 5 degrees Celsius or above 60 degrees Celsius and last but not the least food is within the best before or use by date. Next is the invoice receiving procedure. The different points are compare the invoice with the purchase order. Compare the shipment with the invoice and the purchase order. Examine product quality. Examine product quantity. Sign copy of the invoice and return to the supplier. Keep institution's copy of the invoice. Send invoice to the bookkeeper 
who will audit cost data and authorize payment and arrange proper storage for the shipment. Next is the steps in the receiving process. They include the first step is inspection against the purchase order. A copy of the purchase order has to be filed and kept in the receiving area. This is the first control in the receiving process. This should include a brief description of the product, quantity, price and supplier. In small food service operations, this may be a small notebook just listing down the foods ordered with the prices quoted. In large food service institution, a copy of the purchase order is to be sent immediately to the receiving department to ensure that only the products that have been ordered has been received. The purchase order also will permit the receiving personnel to determine partial deliveries or omission of ordered products. Special training of the receiving personnel is necessary to ensure that he is capable of assessing whether the products received adhere to the standards stipulated. The second step in the receiving process is inspection against the invoice. After the products received have been checked with the purchase order, the deliveries should be compared with the invoice prepared by the supplier. The invoice is the delivery slip sent by the supplier which accompanies the delivery. The receiving personnel checks the deliveries with the invoice sent by the supplier to ensure that the goods received matches with the invoice sent by the supplier to facilitate preparation of bills. This is a critical step in the receiving process. If quantities and rates are correct and the receiving personnel has checked the quality of the products, the invoice is signed. Any correction must be noted on the invoice before it is signed. Normally, invoice is kept in duplicate. One copy is for the records in the purchasing department and one copy is sent to the accounting department. The third step in the receiving process is acceptance or rejection of orders. Rejection of the delivered product, if any, should be done at the time of delivery if the product is not adhering to the standards. If errors are discovered after the delivery personnel leaves, the supplier should be contacted immediately and the correction intimated to him. Whenever products are returned, the accounting personnel should be notified to ensure correct payment. If a product is not available or only partial amount is delivered, the buyer should decide if it is to be back ordered. The fourth step in the receiving process is completion of receiving records. The receiving records provide an accurate list of all deliveries of food and supplies, quantity received, date of receiving and price quoted. This information is helpful in verifying and paying invoices and provides an important record for cost control of all foods delivered to the food service institution. 
This is normally done in duplicate with one copy sent to the accounting department and another for the food service records. The last step in the receiving process is removal to storage. Products should be immediately transferred to the storage area. Proper security measures are essential to prevent theft and pilferage. Spoilage and deterioration may occur if refrigerated and frozen foods are kept at room temperature for a very long period of time. Food service operations may indicate on the receiving record various procedures for marking or tagging products for storage. Marking consists of writing information like date of delivery and cost directly on the cases, cans or packaging materials before it is placed on storage. This helps in calculating the cost of the food faster because prices do not have to be looked up from the records and fewer products will get spoiled on the shelves because the ones with the oldest date will be used first. Tagging will be used for facilitating stock rotation to ensure that older products are used first which is particularly important for perishable foods. Next we will see the standard receiving practice. A set of standard receiving practice should include the following. Plan for delivery and have tools for receiving ready. Visually inspect all items and look for signs of container damage. Check and record temperatures of frozen and refrigerated items. Count each item that can be counted that is number of cases or number of individual items. Weigh each item that is delivered by weight such as meat. Approved weighing scales must be provided for this purpose. Check the count or weight figure against the count or weight figure on the invoice accompanying the delivery. If purchase orders are used, the invoice information should also be verified against the purchase order. Confirm that the items are of the quality desired. Reject unacceptable goods and note the rejection on the invoice. Any item which does not conform to the standards according to specifications are returned with the person delivering the food along with a note on the delivery chalan stating the items returned. In case any unacceptable food items are noticed after the delivery person leaves, the supplier is informed over the telephone. This is followed by a request in writing to replace the same amount with specified quality in exchange for the returned item. The request is made for replacement of the returned goods according to specifications immediately. The items if not replaced within the specified period are then bought or substituted and the supplier is warned against any such occurrence again. 
if such behavior is again repeated then the supplier is usually changed spot check case goods to ensure that they are full and all items in the case are of the same quality check of items on the invoice check prices on invoices against prices quoted on the market quotation sheet or against the purchase order if purchase order is used if goods are delivered without an invoice prepare a memorandum invoice listing name of supplier date of delivery count or weight of items and from the market quotation sheet the price of the items sign the invoice date the food packages store all items in proper storage locations as soon after delivery as possible send all invoices and credit memoranda to the accounting office what are the criteria for accepting or rejecting food delivered we will see about it now the buyer should be familiar with the product of specification of each food item purchased by the institution market forms of the food available and the corresponding units of purchase in size count and weight the criteria for accepting or rejecting different food items are we shall see the different food groups one by one the first is meat lamb and mutton in food service institutions meat may be purchased in one of the following forms in the carcass by the quarter wholesale cut or in ready to serve portions meat and meat products or any other fleshy foods should be delivered at a temperature of 41 degrees fahrenheit or 5 degrees celsius or colder meat should be obtained from an approved source the flesh should be bright pink in color and should not have any bad odor the packaging should be clean and in good condition next is veal veal is defined as the flesh of bovine animals usually not over 12 weeks of age at the time of slaughtering the flesh should be light pinkish gray in color fine grained soft in texture and contain little intramuscular fat the coat of exterior fat should be thin and pinkish white next is pork the best quality pork has muscle that is grayish white to pink in young and deep rose in older animals the flesh is firm and fine grained and the bones are soft and red it should be delivered at a temperature of 41 degrees fahrenheit or 5 degrees centigrade or colder poultry should be obtained from an approved source the packaging should be clean and in good condition fish fish should be delivered at 41 degrees fahrenheit or colder the eyes should be bright clear and full the flesh should be firm and not separating from the bones the gills should be reddish pink with no slime the scales should be bright colored glossy and adhering to the skin 
it should not have any of odors next is shellfish shellfish should be delivered at 45 degrees fahrenheit that is 7 degrees centigrade or colder they should be delivered with their shells intact and clean poultry they should have tender meat with soft pliable smooth textured skin and flexible breast bone cartilage they also should be obtained from an approved source as for any non vegetarian foods they should be delivered at 41 degrees fahrenheit that is 5 degrees centigrade or colder x they should be delivered at 45 degrees fahrenheit that is 7 degrees centigrade or colder they should be obtained from an approved source the exterior should be clean next we shall see about milk and milk products all milk and milk products should be pasteurized they should be delivered in proper cartons or containers at 41 degrees fahrenheit or colder they should be purchased from an approved source they should not have any of odor as i told you before all milk and milk products should have been produced and handled in accordance with the best sanitary practices vegetables and fruits uniformity in variety degree of maturity and freedom from defects are the selection criteria for vegetable and fruits the criteria for accepting some of the common vegetables and fruits are vegetables beans should be firm crisp snap readily when broken stringless and spot free brinjal uniform dark color smooth and heavy for size cabbage bright fresh firm and free from yellowing or cracks carrots firm fresh crisp well shaped and good color cauliflower compact heavy firm curd like heads and no black spots green leafy vegetables fresh clean tender leaves and the leaves should not be wilted onions bright hard and well shaped potatoes sound firm fairly smooth skin no green discoloration or black spots and heavy for size tomatoes mature firm but not over ripe smooth skin good color and heavy for size now we shall see some of the common fruits bananas plump and free from bruises citrus fruits firm well shaped heavy for size thin skinned and juicy and should have very few seeds grapes plump fresh highly colored pears fairly firm and free from blemishes pineapple fresh clean appearance and hollow eyes cereals cereal products pulses and legumes examine for presence of insects foreign materials like stones hair etc reject if lumpy discolored or with odors which is characteristic of infestation 
the packaging should be clean and in good condition. Nuts reject if there is presence of insect or other residues of flavor and color change. Fats and oils any signs of leakage or any unusual seal may indicate spoilage, rancidity or willful contamination. Reject if color is not as expected or the product has any of flavor. Canned foods. It should be obtained from an approved source. The cans should not have swollen ends, leaks, rust or dents. The label should be readable and attached to the product. Daily food receiving report. A daily food receiving report summarizes each day's invoices. It is not necessary to list on the receiving report each individual item on each invoice since this detail can always be obtained if it is needed later by referring to that particular invoice. One line on the receiving report should suffice for each invoice. At the end of each day, the person completing the receiving report should forward it to the accounting office together with the related invoice and purchase orders. The accounting office should then verify that all invoices have been extended and totaled properly by the supplier. If any errors are discovered, the receiving report figure should be corrected and the supplier notified. Invoice amounts have been properly entered on the daily food receiving report. Invoices have been matched with purchase orders and prices on invoices have been checked against purchase order prices. What are the consequences of improper receiving practices? There are various methods suppliers or delivery drivers can use to defraud a food service institution when they observe that control procedures for receiving are not being used. These methods include the following. Failing to meet specifications watering or icing products shipped by weight, invoicing high quality items for low quality items delivered, shipping overweight or overcount, invoice overcharging, bulk weighing, putting good directly into the storage areas and fail to deliver proper quantity or quality, delivering goods outside normal receiving hours. How do you maintain security in receiving area? The following methods can be followed to prevent pilferage and food losses in the receiving area. The person responsible for receiving should not be responsible for purchasing. There should be scheduled hours for receiving foods. Adequate equipments and facilities should be provided in the receiving area for the receiving personnel to check the quantity and quality of foods received. The products should be removed immediately from receiving to storage. Delivery persons should not be permitted 
in the storage area. Sales people should also be excluded in the receiving area. To summarize, in food service institutions, more than 50% is spent on food materials. If there are no proper receiving practices, a number of problems may arise such as careless losses, failure to assure quality and quantity of goods delivered and pilferage. These potential losses can cut into the profits of the organization. Proper control in the receiving area will ensure lesser food losses and increase in the profits of the organization. Thank you students for listening. I hope now you have a good idea about sound receiving practices in a food service institution.